Hi, I'm Taroni Lodog and I am here at my friends at Mountain Rose Herbs and I'd like to show you how to make a basic elderberry syrup. You know, the winter months are coming along and one of the questions I get asked a lot are, are there things that I can use for my family that are sort of nutritious and help get us through the sniffle season, you know, strong and healthy? Well, one of my favorite herbs is elderberries. Now you can use them fresh or dried, but for our purposes, I'm going to show you how to make dried elderberries because they're easier to find, right? All year long, it's easy to access dried elderberries. Now, when you're using um, elderberries and you're making a syrup, there's just a couple things I want you to keep in mind. Syrups that are shelf stable, meaning that they're going to sit out at room temperature for a long period of time, require more sugar. You're going to have to or, or alcohol, but you're going to have to add something to it to keep from getting bacteria and mold and other things. So the syrup I'm going to teach you how to make today, I'm intending for you to keep it in the refrigerator, all right? And you don't need to use as much sugar, and we're not going to use alcohol, so it'll be stable for everybody in the family, except we are using honey as our preservative. And remember, honey itself has lots of wonderful properties to it, uh, especially during the, the, the sniffle season. But honey is not safe for children under the age of one year old, right? So you can't use honey. If you were going to make this recipe for um, somebody that was littler than one that, that we were going to share with in your household, you would need to substitute either sugar or maple syrup for that. And again, you would keep it in the refrigerator. But again, honey is my preferred preservative. Um, as well as sweetener in syrups, uh, but just not suitable for kids under one because of a rare condition called infantile botulism. Sounds scary. You don't want it. All right. Now, so when you're going to make your syrup, all you need to do is have a pan. This is a ceramic non-stick pan. Uh, glass works well too. I mean, I think the main thing you want to avoid are any types of um, pans that um, um, that off gas or do anything else like that with with making your herbs I, I, I discourage you from having them in your house to cook anything anyway So this is a nice pan. We're going to use we have dried elderberries. We have some ginger I like ginger in my elderberry because it's very warming has a very warming effect And when people feel like they're just getting a little bit under the weather that ginger really kind of has this dispersing quality to it It's very very nice in a syrup so all we're going to do is we're going to take our pan, and this is two cups of pre-measured dried elderberries, all right? So I'm going to put it into my pan, okay? And here I have four cups of water that's already been pre-measured. Remember that your finished herbal product is only as good as what you start with. Right? So the ingredients matter, and that includes water. So water should be distilled or it should be a good spring water it, it, or a purified water depending upon where you live. Now I'm going to add the four cups of water here. I like a lot of things in my elderberry syrup. Today I'm going to just use ginger and cinnamon. But I also want to tell you that you should be creative. There's not just one way to make spaghetti sauce. Every Every grandma has their spaghetti sauce recipe, right? And, and it had little tweaks of this or that in it. And so you want to be creative with your syrups. I think one of the things that um, beginners often struggle with when they're just learning how to make some of these herbal, herbal products for their home is that they're very rigid in how they do things. You can be creative. You can add vanilla bean. I love like a slice of vanilla bean in here. Cardamom tastes really good. Um, so, so just... Be, be, give yourself permission to, to play with the flavor, okay? Now, this is ginger. This is dried ginger. And again, I love ginger. I mean, during the cold season, is there anything better than just coming home on a cold day, everybody's chilled, and you make yourself a cup of ginger tea with a squeeze of lemon and a little honey in it? I mean, so ginger is sort of associated with cold weather because of its beautiful warming properties. Now, you don't want to use too much dried ginger. Um, because it's, it's more potent than the fresh, right? It's just it's stronger in its flavor than the fresh. So we're going to just put this on. Whoop, let me put my cinnamon stick in here. I'm going to put my cinnamon stick in here. And we're going to turn on our heat. Is this not the cutest ever sort of little hot plate? I want one. So anyway, we're going to turn this on and we're going to watch it. We're going to watch it. We're going to stir it up occasionally. I'm going to let this come to a boil. And as soon as it begins to boil, I'm going to turn down the heat and I'm going to let it simmer for 30 minutes, all right? 
So it's just going to simmer for 30 minutes. I'm going to leave it covered. I'm going to keep an eye on it. And then once it's done simmering, I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to let it steep for an hour. All right. So, you know, the longer, the longer you simmer and steep something, just the more we're going to be able to pull into the water because we're going to discard all the herbs. So we want to get as much as we can basically into our liquid tea before we turn it into our syrup. So we've simmered our elderberry for 30 minutes and now we're letting it steep for an hour. We're almost to the end of that. And I just wanted to go over a couple of things with you. You know, how much herb you use to how much water when you're making a syrup varies. It varies on a number of things, the type of herb that you're using and what your overall goal is. So in this case, I used one ounce of elderberry for every four ounces of water. Now this is a very strong decoction that I'm making, right? Because I'm gonna make it into a syrup where I won't only want to have to take, you know, a teaspoon, a couple teaspoons a day. So remember, this is a strong tea. Teas are normally consumed, you know, you drink cups of it every day. So when you're making a syrup, it's got to be stronger, right? You have to use more herb per water. One ounce of herb to four ounces of water, one ounce of herb to eight ounces of water tends to be common. If you find a recipe for elderberry syrup that says one ounce of, of the elderberry uh, to like 16 ounces of water, that's also a perfectly fine recipe. What you'll have to remember is after you've simmered and steeped, you'll strain the herb and then you've got to reduce it by half. So you'll have to, you'll have to simmer it for another you know, 20, 30 minutes until it's reduced to half of its original volume. That is a perfectly acceptable way of making syrups. The reason I'm teaching you this way is because many herbs you don't want to do that with. Like thyme herb, if you were making a thyme syrup, if you put one ounce to 16 ounces of water and then you had to reduce by half, all that heat would destroy a lot of the therapeutic properties, all of the wonderful volatile oils in that that are in thyme. OSHA is the same kind of thing. So, so this is a good standard recipe for you to remember. One ounce of herb to four ounces. Steep or simmer based upon the herb. Strain and then add 50%. Measure your final liquid and then add 50% honey. And you're done. Okay? So we'll write this all down in the blog so you'll have it all written so you know, you know all the little variations you can do. But right now we're done. The timer's gone off and I'm going to strain out our elderberry, our ginger, and our cinnamon. Now to do this, you just need um, an appropriate sized jar, um, any kind of funnel, uh, canning funnels or other types of funnels are good. If you're going to use um, a cheesecloth, make sure that you really do double it up so that you don't get little pieces coming through. You can also use an undyed muslin. Um, I encourage you to, you know, you can certainly purchase them online um, at, 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 on many places, and including getting a lot of these supplies from Mountain Rose Herbs. But I would also say going to your local fabric stores can also be very good because they have huge, huge rolls of undyed muslin, um, which can also be very um, useful for these kinds of things that you do at home. So now we're just going to pour our syrup through our cheesecloth. Oh, it smells divine. I know you can't smell it through the camera, but let me tell you, the cinnamon and the ginger are really coming through with this sort of subtle, beautiful elderberry. Just gorgeous. Now, this is quite hot, so if you were going to squeeze this really well, you'd want to make sure that you have gloves on. Um, or, that, or that you've left the lid off that last 15 minutes or so, so it cools off because you don't want to burn your hands, right? And then you'll just, you'll just squeeze really well. Oh, that's so beautiful. Good. And when you're finished with your herbs, um, you know, I hope you compost them. They're great to just put out in your compost pile that you just don't throw them, you know, down the sink or in the trash. Um, your, your plants like to go back into the earth where they came from, all right? So then we sort of take this out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then you would add your honey. So you would measure how much liquid you have, right? So if you have 16 ounces of your finished syrup, you would add eight ounces of your honey or your maple syrup, right, or your sugar. 
right? But, but honey is the best, really, for sniffle, season kinds of syrups that you're making. Use the honey. You may not know this, but actually the American um, Academy of Family Practice and the American Academy of Pediatrics, they sort of recommend honey um, for younger kids that you know come down with sniffles and, and scratchy throats and that because honey is so soothing to the throat. So remember, not for children under the age of one, but honey's wonderful in and of itself. So if you have 16 ounces of your, of your syrup, you would pour eight ounces of honey into your syrup. Oh, it's so beautiful. Now, I get a lot of questions about, is it raw, you know, you know local, which kind should I use? Obviously, um, raw local honey is the best. And for the purposes of this video, we're sort of moving through these steps kind of quickly. I would add my honey once my syrup had cooled not quite to room temperature, but close, close. Because I like to use raw honey, and I don't like to get the heat over 100 degrees um, when I'm using my raw honey, because I love to keep all those good natural enzymes and everything in there, right? So, oh, oh my goodness. This looks so beautiful. And I want you to think how little time and actually investment this took us to make with our dried elderberries, a little cinnamon stick, some dried ginger powder, and some raw local honey. I have made now this beautiful elder ginger cinnamon syrup. I'll store it in the refrigerator. I'll put the date on it so it has the date that it was prepared, probably with heart, like something made with love, on the date. And I'll, I'll put the name elderberry syrup on it. And then I'll keep it in the fridge and in our house, the way I would use this is I would just have everybody in the morning or in the evening um, enjoy one to two teaspoons of this just straight out of the fridge, just as a daily nourishing sort of beverage to take us through the sniffle seasons and the long winter months. I hope you've enjoyed learning to make this basic elderberry syrup. Um, I hope that uh, you'll try it at home, that you're not intimidated by trying these things, because really, if, 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 you can make, if you can make a basic spaghetti sauce, you can make any herbal kind of remedy that you want. From my house to yours, thank you.